Yesterday, we learned that Ravi Zacharias, International Ministries Canadian Director and Lead Apologist, spent 14 months traveling the world to give a platform to antagonists and defenders of the Christian faith. <clears throat> Focusing on six burning questions, well, we kind of lit a fire yesterday with, is there a God? Well, I would like to introduce the battleground of God and science with this scripture. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God, Romans 1. Uh, verse 20 specifically. And Andy, I just, I, I'm gonna cut to the chase here and say that if you know God, there is no question of his existence. There is nothing that can argue away that reality, that relationship. You're a father, you have a, Katrina's two. Two years old now, yeah. And I just, I marvel that anyone can go through childbirth, become a parent, and question the existence of a creator. Well, it's interesting, you know, you say that, that I can still remember an experience uh, for me coming to parenthood a little bit later in life, was walking into the nursery just a month or two after Katrina had been born and uh, picking her up and holding her in my arms and looking down at her and thinking to myself, do you know, if I'm an atheist, and I spend a lot of my time dialoguing and uh, discussing with atheist friends, if I'm an atheist, I have to conclude that what I have here is a very attractive arrangement of atoms and I have, I'm well done me, I've succeeded in reproducing my DNA, so I have uh, achieved my, the reason that good old mother nature put me here. But other than that, that's all there is to it. And then I found myself instantly thinking, do you know, that is as far from the experience of what being a father actually is as it's possible to be. I mean, that's light years away from the actual lived experience of being a father, which tells me that there is a gap between atheism and reality. Um, that it doesn't actually engage with the everyday experience of most of us. So in a sense, I agree with you, yes. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just kind of dipping into a huge project here, a six Coupling documentary feet, yeah. series. Uh, it's a power tool. Who's it designed for? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question, Moira. We set out, when we set out to, to make the Burning Questions uh, documentary, I think we, 18 months or so ago, when we first sat down and planned it, there were two audiences uh, in mind. I wanted to produce a documentary that you could sit down and watch with a non-Christian friend. So primarily it's an evangelistic tool. So many evangelistic tools that are designed to be that I think fail because they have a kind of, um, they have, a, what's the best way to describe it? A kind of cringe factor. We've all seen those things. You sit down and you watch it and you think, I would struggle to show this to my Christian friends, let alone my non-Christian friends, quite frankly, because I want to keep them. Yeah. That Burning Questions is aimed to, aims to cover that, that gap. That's why we, we talk to atheists and Muslims and Hindus and Jews. We want to make sure we represent the other side of the discussion. We also want to go to intelligent Christian voices as well who are going to respectfully engage in the conversation, not just beat up on atheists. It's not designed to be that. This is not a debate. This is a discussion. So it's aimed as an evangelistic tool, step number one. And number two, it's aimed, I think, to help equip Christians uh, get into the conversation, stay in the conversation, engage their, their friends who don't share their convictions and do so in a way that's engaging, that's friendly, uh, that's helpful. So one of the things that's happening, for example, we've, uh, we're going to make available a study guide, free study guide. It will be on the Burning Questions website, burningquestions.ca. Um, people are able to pull that down. And if you're a small group leader or perhaps uh, involved in leadership in your local church, you'll be able to get that study guide free of charge and it will help you use that study guide uh, use the DVD rather to equip uh, your congregations, equip your friends to actually reach out. Great on university campuses. This is a, a, a key direction for those who are uh, having their thinking sharpened. Uh, yeah, I think so. Intelligent questions yeah. and answers. I think so, and also hopefully some of the questions that we engage. I mean, I spend my life, as does uh, the many of the, the RZDM speaking team, on university campuses. Mm -hmm. And so uh, most of the questions that come around are the same questions again and again in new forms. And if you look at the questions on the back of that DVD pack, you'll see that most of them are questions that we get all the time. Yeah. The God and science that we're talking about a little bit today, that is such a question we get all the time from people. You know, my atheist friends telling me, we don't need God, science has disproven him. Um, the problem of, ev of evil we'll be talking about later uh, in tomorrow. the week. Tomorrow. Uh, other religions. Those are questions that real people are really asking. And I think one of the most important things we can do as Christians who want to commend the gospel to people is show that we are listening to their questions. So often in the church we talk about one thing and the world is talking about something else and we go past each other. 
and burning questions is a real attempt to engage with what people are actually asking, take the questions seriously and help people think through and wrestle towards an answer. Okay, well, uh, both sides are represented in this segment. We're about to see a discussion. Make sure you read the bottom screen to know whether they're uh, for or against. Oh, that comes out, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here we go, God and science. I think there are two magisteria. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the how and one is the why. And I think the why doesn't exist. The why doesn't exist? No. I think there is um, no evidence for uh, answers to why questions. Uh, science doesn't invoke purpose at any point, and it can, uh, it can account for every question that it tackles without having to invoke purpose, clearly. Um, evolution is the, the big example mm. of that, but all the little things, you know, why does a, um, a pendulum a swing with a particular period. It doesn't have a purpose to swing. It just obeys the laws of nature, as it were, and it swings. So I think that all real questions are actually how questions in that magisterium of the two. So that's the real one. Now, people would say that I've got one eye shut, that there is this magisterium of why questions, but I deny that. I think that every real question is a how questions. Why questions, insofar as they are real, are just a collection, a bundle of, of how questions. And we use why as a shorthand for that bundle. Well, yeah, I think I would disagree with that. I'd probably start off by asking him why he thinks that. Uh, now, either he'll give me no answer, or he'll try and answer that why question to try and answer the why question on his own definition, he'd be stepping outside of doing science into doing philosophy, which would contradict his own position. So his position is either self-contradictory or one that he is self-admittedly unable to defend. Um, so I think that in itself calls into question that position of what's called, called scientism. The idea that science is not only a good way to know about certain kinds of reality, but the only way to know about anything that's real. And I think that's just patently false. That conversation, is science the only way of knowing, or the way of knowing, is actually part of a larger debate in the academy about the role of the humanities and the social sciences. And there are people who say the sciences are all powerful and they need to get rid of the humanities. And I completely disagree with that. And the reason is because I think many very important questions, many of the most important questions in life, are not amenable to the scientific method. That doesn't mean that the scientific method isn't incredibly powerful. I love science. I think it's really something worth giving one's life for, as I've done. But I don't think it's going to answer most of the important questions in life. Oh, boy. A lot there, eh? Oh, man. Could you listen to that all day? I mean, I just need to say that Jesus said that the transforming faith that he offers in himself can be understood by a child. Now we're moving into arguments that are pretty lofty, but I wonder what some of these men and women do with world-renowned scientists mm. who are believers in Jesus Christ. Well, you raise a good, a good question because obviously Peter Atkins hints at this, he doesn't think the two fit together. Uh, you know, Richard Dawkins in his best-selling book, The God Delusion, which really kicked off the new atheism, you know, has got uh, several places where he seems to imply that you simply cannot be a scientist and be a Christian. And I'm afraid to say to Richard and to Peter, that's simply wrong. There are many, many great men and women uh, working in the sciences today. In fact, the whole, you, one could argue that the whole of the scientific method was actually founded by Christian thinkers. Fra Francis Bacon, who is arguably the father of the modern scientific method, he was a Christian. Today, you could take someone, say, like Francis Collins, who was head of the Human Genome Project, one of the most important scientific research projects of the last 10 years. He's written a book called The Language of God, in which he sets out the way that, as a Christian, he thinks faith and science fit together. And uh, one of the things that was interesting when we were filming this documentary, I remember talking to a, a professor at Cambridge University in England about this, and he said, the funny thing is, he said, I'm a physicist, and he said, the physics department here is stuffed with religious believers. I know of 80 or 90, maybe even more than that, in this university alone, who are theists, 
money, Christian or otherwise. He said biology is perhaps slightly different. So it depends on which aspect of the sciences. But I think particularly in physics and cosmology, those people who are peering into the heart of the, the universe and the scientific laws that power our universe, I think people look at those laws, I think, and draw a conclusion that there, that something, somebody, there's some intelligence. A causer, a designer, come An on. artist or an author, it lies behind them. And really? so, yeah, science and religion fit together very well. Uh, we were introduced, I was introduced to a new word, scientism. Ism, yeah. Rism, ism. Um, yeah, scientism, it's very helpful to be aware of that word. You see many people, I think many Christians get daunted by uh, atheists who sort of throw science around as a weapon. And one of the ways to, to begin defanging that is to make a differentiation between science and scientism. Mm. Science is a methodology. It's a methodolo methodology for uncovering truth using experiment and observation. We learned it in high school, yep. very straightforward. Works brilliantly, one of the best tools that human beings have ever invented. That's science, methodology. Scientism is an ideology, not a methodology. Scientism is an ideology, an ideology that says that only science can uncover what is true. So if it can't be determined using physics, chemistry, or biology, it simply is meaningless. So it's a God, small g. It's basically a God, small g, or it's helpful to compare it to other isms, communism or capitalism. They're philosophies. It's a philosophy masquerading as science. And I think it damages science, actually. I've often said this to people like Peter Atkins. I would say to Peter, you are actually damaging science because you're trying to use it for something it wasn't designed for. A hammer is a wonderful tool. If I start trying to do brain surgery with it, <laughs> it's going to go badly wrong. Right. You know, as I listen to this, a dear young friend, fourth year university student, is on my heart. And clearly, he has embraced scientism. His whole worldview is anchored in science. Yeah. And when we get into, and we've only a couple of times got into a serious back and forth discussion, but his eyes glaze over. It's almost like a, he's a, a cult member because he has stopped receiving mm -hmm. and he's locked down and mm, just entrenched yeah. and terribly defensive. And uh, what I do know about this young man is that he's a very wounded person. Yeah. And I wonder how often at the root, the issue is not an intellectual issue, it's a volitional issue. I'm angry at God. Yeah, I think, I think there's some of that going on. And I think uh, there's been a number of studies done that show that actually behind some, not all, to be fair, but behind, uh, behind, certainly behind some atheism, I think there lies a, there lies a deeper issue. You become, you become an atheist for deeper reasons. Two of the most common ones are you've had a bad experience of religion and the church. Many people today have been wounded by the church, sadly, in the way that, that they've, they've encountered Christians behaving, or perhaps by the way that life has treated you. Life's gone badly wrong, you've experienced some terrible tragedy. We're gonna talk about the problem of evil tomorrow. And so that drives you into your atheism, and then you start rooting around for things to support it mm and shore it up. And one of the things you quickly embrace is science. And I think this comes out. So um, it's fun. I think on the, on the episode on the, do, on the DVD on, on God and Science, we touch on a little bit of that. So again, burningquestions.ca, mm. you can find out about all of that and more. Got me going. Okay, I'm going to leave you with a couple of scriptures. Ecclesiastes 3.11. You must love this in your debating, Andy. God has planted eternity in the human heart. Like he didn't miss anybody on that one. So there's something that's going to be crying out. There's got to be more. It is impossible to have the peace and joy we were created for, apart from the one who says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. And Francis P. Cobb said this, science is but a mere heap of facts, not a gold chain of truths, if we refuse to link it to the throne of God. You might not use that in your debating, Andy, but I've just done it. Very good, Moira. And we're going to tackle another big one tomorrow. Oh, just the light subject. Just small of, questions. The problem of evil. Right here, same time, tomorrow. Thank you, Andy. You're welcome. And Thank you. And burningquestions.ca. That's, uh, that's the website. And the, the DVD information study guide. It's all up there.